This week I happened to pull out some of my favorite fragrances within my collection, so stay tuned to find out what I wore this week. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel where I upload weekly fragrance content. So of course, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and also be sure to check me out over on my Instagram page. But that's right, another week, another weekly fragrance rotation. Now, if you are new to the series that I do on a weekly basis, we pretty much go over what fragrance I wore on each day, how many sprays, the kind of weather, and of course, if that fragrance got any compliments or not. So let's just get right into Sunday. So for Sunday, it happened to be in the low 80s, kind of a gloomy, cloudy day outside. It wasn't really sunny or anything like that. But I did pull out a new fragrance in my collection that I picked up in a vlog, and it is Mason Francis Kirchhoff's Gentle Fluidity Silver. So this is one of my favorites from the house of MFK, especially when it comes to like versatility and wearability. This one is one of the best in the entire house. Signature scent worthy without a doubt for a lot of people. It a burst of this very invigorating juniper berries in the opening, a little bit aromatic as well with this nice ambrox and touch in the base. Now, this actually does get compared to like Creed's Green Irish Tweed and Davidoff Cool Water which is kind of weird because I'm not a fan of those scent profiles or those two fragrances at all. I actually despise Cool Water personally. Don't hate me if I say that because I know that has a cult following. Just, I never vibe with it, never liked it. So that just goes to show you how good this one is compared to those two when it is very, very similar. It's kind of like a distant cousin to those scent profiles in my opinion and just more of a sophisticated, well done way. Of course, you have one of the best perfumers, Francis Kirchhoff, behind this, so you're gonna expect top notch, and that's what you're gonna get. But on that day, I did do five sprays of Gentle Fluidity Silver, no compliments, but I do wanna try out Gentle Fluidity Gold, even though I think it does lean a little bit more feminine, but a lot of you guys are asking my opinion about it, so maybe I'll look into that, but Silver is an absolute banger. Monday was in the mid 80s, but it was beautiful outside, very, very sunny. And I went with one of my favorite fragrances in my collection, and it is Moss Milano's Russian Tea. So Russian Tea is honestly one of the best tea dominant fragrances I've ever smelled. It's very, very complex. And one of those kind of fragrances where you can actually distinguish each and every note in here, which include like raspberry, so you get a fruitiness, you get this black, dark, rugged leather. Of course, you get that black tea, you get a smoky incense, and it's just to die for. When I tell you this is such a good fragrance, I honestly mean it. Now, I did do six sprays of Russian tea, and this stuff is strong. You don't really need that much. Just look at that juice in there. Very, very potent juice. I actually almost thought about making this my signature scent when I first got it because of how good it is. And I do have a funny story to tell you guys. On that day, this woman kind of came up to me, and every time I was around her, she was like, oh, do you smell that? Something smells kind of like a candle. And I was kind of like playing along with it because I think she was being smart. She knew it's my fragrance, of course. So I was like, yeah, whatever it is, it smells great. What's it smell like to you? She was like, oh, I don't know. kind of smells perfumey, whatever that means in her head. And I was like, yeah, it kind of smells like tea. She's like, oh, I don't know about tea. And then just throughout the day, I was kind of like messing with her and stuff like that because she was being smart. Obviously, it wasn't a candle. It was my fragrance. And honestly, guys, when it comes to fragrances for me, I can care less what people think. I'll wear whatever I want, wherever I want, however I want with how many ever sprays I want to put on. If I want to like overspray it, I will. And if you don't like it, you can just stay away from me and that, that would be perfectly fine. So I'm not afraid to express myself with my fragrances, just how I'm not afraid to express my opinions and that's the way it's gonna be. For Tuesday, it was in the low 80s, kind of cloudy and gloomy outside as well. And I pulled out one of my favorites, if not my favorite from the house of Zerzhov, which probably isn't suited for this kind of temperature or weather, but it is Naxos. So, Nexos is honestly a very kind of unique, different take on an aromatic fragrance in my opinion. It has this overdose of this honey, which is very, very sweet, but it doesn't really come across too cloying or sickly on skin. And that's probably because of how high quality and well blended this fragrance is. But you get this very, very nice lavender. And this stuff is so addicting. You do get a slight citrus top, but that fades away extremely quick. And I know a lot of people say you can wear this one in the summer, like when it's very, very hot outside. For me though, I like to kind of keep this more targeted for the colder weather, but for some reason on Tuesday, I was in the mood for this beauty. And in my opinion, this stuff is a masterpiece, especially for those honey lovers, those aromatic lovers. This is one you absolutely have to try and it might even blow your mind just how good this fragrance comes across. On that day, I did do six sprays of Naxos, no compliments. 
and I don't really see this one being the most complimented fragrance. It's not really that crowd pleasing. It will take a special kind of a crowd of people to really appreciate this one and understand it and see why this one is so special. So heading into Wednesday, it was in the mid 80s, very sunny outside though. And I did pull a clone because I knew I was getting the real thing later on in the week and I just wanted to spray this one and wear it because I love this scent profile so much. And it is coming from Dua. This is Enter the Tiger. You already know this is cloning Bulgari's Tiger, which I did get. The beauty is right there in my collection, finally. However, if you don't want to spend the hefty $400 price tag on Tiger, you want to clone, this is one of the best clones alongside Black Panther. It gets it down to maybe 80 to 90% similar. I had to get the real thing, of course. I collect fragrances, review fragrances, and it's my favorite scent profile of all time. Very similar to, of course, Los Sparrow Vibrato and Louis Vuitton La Mentite, which are some of my favorite fragrances, but I had to get the original one that started them all, Tiger itself. But yeah, Enter the Tiger is great. I did do six sprays of this one as well. And this scent profile, most of the time when I wear this fragrance or Black Panther, people lose their mind over it. Always ask me, what am I wearing? You smell amazing. On that day though, no compliments, but geez, this one put a smile on my face and just put me in a good mood throughout the entire day. And I will probably still reach for this one, even though I do own Tiger now, but maybe going to work, maybe run errands, things like that. If I don't want to actually spray that one, maybe keep it for more suited towards like special occasions and things like that too, just because of how close this gets to scent profile. Thursday was in the mid eighties as well, very cloudy outside. And I pulled out my favorite vanilla in my collection and probably of all time. And it is Nishane's Ani. This stuff right here, so, so sexy, so cozy, so comforting. Of course you get that very creamy, spicy vanilla but you get this zesty ginger and some like very spicy pepper that almost smells like black pepper to my nose. Just an incredible, sexy, alluring vanilla fragrance for both a man and a woman. Just flawless, guys. If you're looking for vanilla, you want the best of the best and actually the best performing vanilla as well. Ani is gonna be for you. And it's also a very kind of luxurious, unique take on a vanilla fragrance. Doesn't smell cheap like a lot of vanillas can smell. This stuff does smell very natural. And on that day, I did do six sprays of Ani. And this being an extract to parfum, you obviously expect this stuff to last you all day. And that's exactly what it's gonna do. Easily, you don't have to reapply this one or anything. It performs 12 plus hours on skin without any hesitation. So if that's what you're looking for, check out Ani. Even though it is pretty pricey, you can find them on discounters at a much more affordable price compared to retail. Yeah, just so delicious. This is the kind of fragrance you spray on if you're going like out on a date in the evening time, if you're gonna be close to a woman, like all cozied up together, this is gonna do the job for you. Friday was the coldest day of the week, I think in the high 70s, also cloudy, so it wasn't that nice outside. And I put out the King's Little Brother and that is Creed Aventus Cologne. So what I pretty much do is wear Creed Aventus in like the fall and winter, like the colder weather, and then keep Aventus Cologne for the spring and summer. I think that kind of combination works perfectly because this one is a much brighter, fresher take on Aventus, less smoky, of course, less woody. And they kind of replace that pineapple with this mandarin orange in the opening. It's honestly well done, even though I don't think I would say I prefer this one personally over the original Aventus. But from my experience, guys, if you want compliments from women out of these two, this is the one to go for. Women lose their mind over Aventus Cologne. Whereas men lose their mind over Aventus just because I always explain how masculine alpha male type of vibe Aventus gives off. But this one is a bigger compliment getter. So if that's primarily what you're looking for out of those two, definitely go for Aventus Cologne. But on that day, I did do five sprays of Aventus Cologne. Didn't really do much. It wasn't really around many people or anything like that. No compliments. This smells so luxurious and is probably my favorite creed for the summertime over like Virgin Island water over Silver Mountain Water, this stuff is my go-to. So wrapping the week off on Saturday, which was in the low 80s, but very, very hot and sunny outside. And I pulled out one of my favorite fragrances and one of my first niche fragrances in my collection. Of course, it's the one and only Parfums de Mali's Leighton. So Leighton, you cannot go wrong with guys. Apple, vanilla, so fruity, so good. And this one is just tried and tested for me personally. I've had this fragrance for a few years now. And this one never lets me down, guys. On that day, I actually did do 10 sprays of Leighton, which is pretty heavy, especially for a fragrance like this. This is no slouch. This is very, very strong juice. 
but I did do some shopping and stuff like that. Went to the mall, where I, on that day I actually picked up Bulgari's Tigar, of course. But you honestly cannot go wrong with Leighton, and it's probably my favorite from Parfums de Mali, alongside Percival, alongside, of course, Herod as well. Those three are the main three in my opinion. If you were to pick just one fragrance from Parfums de Mali that is kind of unique, I would absolutely recommend LinkedIn over all the others. That's gonna do it for my weekly fragrance citation. As always, leave a comment down below the fragrances you guys are pulling out. I love seeing what you guys are reaching for because a lot of you guys pull out such unique fragrances that me, myself, have never even heard of. So yeah, leave a comment, subscribe if you guys haven't already, and of course, I'll see all of you back here in my next upload. Take care, everybody.